Domestic livestock grazing patterns on national forest public land has been a mutual concern for the U.S. Forest Service and ranchers. Historically, the Forest Service has permitted ranchers to graze on adjacent areas of public lands, called Forest Service allotments. There are strict guidelines and standards for both the number of grazing days and the number of cattle allowed on the allotments. In areas like the Lewis and Clark National Forest in Montana, changes to Forest Service regulations to manage riparian areas have created new challenges for ranchers and the Forest Service. What I try to do is work with the ranchers, uh, make them aware of what our resource management goals are, and then we try to de develop management systems that work for them and meet our management goals at the same time. Um, big issue right now is riparian guidelines and recently we have developed riparian guidelines and, and our upland guidelines and they have to stay within those. Most of the management problems arise from cattle grazing patterns where cattle graze too much in some areas and not enough in others. Riparian areas have been particularly targeted because these streamside areas have more gentle terrain, shade, high quality forage and water where cattle tend to congregate and stay. If these riparian areas are monitored as overused by the Forest Service, ranchers can have their herds removed from the allotment early and return to the home range to graze on the limited supply of reserved winter feed. Ranchers may then face fewer days to graze their livestock on national forest allotments for future grazing seasons. Dr. Derek Bailey is a research professor at Montana State University. For the last eight years, Bailey has studied cattle grazing patterns and cattle behavior on public land allotments with the use of global positioning satellite technology as well as with first-hand horseback observations both in Montana winters and summers. In the past, um, land managers have had tried to solve these problems in some cases by reducing the total number of livestock, reducing the stocking rate, which would adversely affect the permittee and the rancher using those allotments. But often that, that's not effective because it really doesn't change the behavior of the cows. It just reduces the use. The cattle still congregate in their preferred areas. Some producers have tried herding, but the success of herding alone is limited. A lot of producers who have tried herding in the past have been concerned that once they herd the animals away from the stream, as soon as they leave, the animals turn around and go right back to the stream. With the help of the Forest Service and producers, Dr. Bailey is conducting a replicated three-year study on a 4,000-acre pasture. He is trying to determine if strategic placement of Crystallix low-moisture block supplements will help draw cattle to underused areas of allotments. The hope is to better manage grazing patterns and create more even utilization across the allotments. Low moisture blocks are very palatable. Cattle really like them. Uh, and therefore, in our earlier results showed that by placing these very palatable supplements away from water, up on high slopes and stuff, we could lure cattle to go there. The cattle like the supplement, they travel up there, and then once they get there, they graze the adjoining area. David Michael's family has been ranching in southwestern Montana for over a hundred years. His cow-calf operation depends on his cattle grazing the full season on Forest Service allotments. Yeah, we're getting pressure right now um, from the Forest Service to either reduce our numbers by 28 percent or our grazing days by that same number. And that's why we're looking for answers to counteract that. Michael's allotment was part of the study. The idea we came up with, of course, was try to utilize some crystallix up in the mountains in a smaller container that we could uh, get up there and get in locations where we've got the feed but not necessarily the, the cows. And just trying to utilize the resource better and also keep everybody happy. Historically, it has been thought that cattle don't consume very much crystallix when there is adequate green grass. John Lammers is a Crystallix dealer in Harleton, Montana. Several of his customers are involved in the public lands grazing study. Lammers says that the green grass theory has changed in light of this study. Well, the permittees are going up in the middle of summer, so there's green grass, and it's pretty green all the time they're there. Uh, but then, then we came, you know, the realization came to us that uh, in a rest rotation grazing situation, uh, the livestock are normally eating uh, pastures that have not been grazed 
for a year. So you've got all this big, rank, tall uh, grass up there. So that's that's how we came on to this, uh, this idea of trying to modify the grazing on the uh, Forest Service permits. And uh, as it's turned out, it's worked probably better than we might have hoped. Jim Cusick is a herder hired by ranchers to monitor the cattle and direct cattle grazing patterns. He has seen a change in cattle behavior with the introduction of Crystalix brand supplements. This year we put the tubs out and then we uh, pushed the cattle on them and they pretty much stayed there uh, for a week, 10 days, and, and uh, then we had to put them back. Uh, all I can say about it is it uh, doesn't replace a rider, but it sure helped a lot. The benefits of using Crystalix to help manage grazing patterns have readily been observed by both producers and the Forest Service. John Sampsel is a permittee whose allotment totals 9,400 acres. We were having troubles with the utilization and the, uh, there's one meadow where there's one source of water and that's where the cows seem to want to concentrate all the time and we would go up there, we'd try to push them out of there and they would just come back. When Samsel placed the Crystalix barrels, the change in utilization was immediately evident. It made the cows utilize the end of the pasture that we could never get utilized very well before. It made them stay up there and it, it, it just kept them up there and it, it let other parts of the pasture, you know, there's other some big meadows and stuff that would normally get grazed pretty hard and it just, it, uh, they didn't even hardly touch some of those pastures. Dennis Froming is a rangeland consultant who was hired by the group of ranchers to study the effectiveness of low moisture blocks in public lands grazing management. Froming is a retired federal range conservationist. He observed and collected data on an allotment in the Crazy Mountains. In terms of, uh, of keeping the cattle moved away from the key areas, which was one of the one of the primary objectives. I think that it was extremely effective. In addition, that we got some decent utilization um, out away from from the barrels and away from the water, and into some areas that uh, traditionally have been pretty lightly used. Melvin Armstrong is a fifth-generation cow-calf operator. Armstrong also knows the perspective of the U.S. Forest Service. He worked for the Forest Service for 13 years and spent another 17 years as a Forest Service range improvement independent contractor. His allotment is part of the study and has been used by his family for more than 40 years. Over those years, Armstrong has kept careful records of the grazing habits and usage of his cattle. His notes from the first year of the Crystalix study reflect a definite change. Well, we was uh, trying to get the cattle out of the riparians and the creek bottoms, the overused areas, and trying to get them to use uh, what used to be considered the secondary range. We've utilized range that hadn't been grazed in the 40 years that, that I've been there. Uh, cows will come in a, a few at a time, use the tubs and graze back out. It's put some more weight on the calves. Uh, I don't want to overcredit them to what I did, but uh, I would say we've easily got uh, 20 pounds off of our, our previous weaning weights, the only difference being the, the tubs. David Voldseth's family has been ranching in the Lenape, Montana area for 125 years. They graze a major share of their 1,200 head of cattle on four different Forest Service allotments in the Crazy Mountains. Voldseth took part in the study and has found positive results. It did what we wanted it to do in that it was able to keep cattle in areas that were previously mostly unused and keep them there long enough that the good share of the forage was utilized. There are also benefits to the wildlife population and the general environmental health of public lands. Wayne Butts is a range conservationist for the Forest Service on the Muscle Shell Ranger District of the Lewis and Clark National Forest. He works with 63 permittees administering the grazing permits. He perceives the use of Crystalix brand supplements as a grazing management tool as another way to ease some of the concerns of the environmental community. Well, our mission and the Forest Service is for multiple use, which means you don't maximize use for livestock, but you don't maximize use for recreation either. So what, we're, what the objective here would be to try to spread the use out so we have more even use. Most of the environmental groups that we deal with, all they're asking is that 
we lighten up youth in some of our more sensitive, more productive areas like our riparian areas. There's some benefits to wildlife, uh, specifically elk that we've seen by, by uh, getting that old growth out and keeping uh, those forage plants kind of young or viable and healthy and producing a good quality forage. I think ranchers are going to need to adopt this type of technology and continue to recognize the importance of the sustainability of the grazing with respect to uh, ecological needs, wildlife concerns, and the concerns of all conservationists. And I think we'll find in, in time that the uh, elk in particular will use those areas more as well because a lot of that coarse rough forage has been graze down and what's left will be considerably more palatable to the wildlife populations. Grazing can also, it can benefit wildlife if you keep, you know, the old rank grass grazed, it tends to come back greener and wildlife like that. The relationship between the Forest Service, permittees and herders can also benefit from such a cattle grazing distribution strategy. So both the land manager and the rancher both can uh, win and both have, uh, feel very positive about this type of management approach to manage livestock grazing. I would say a lot of guys bought themselves 10 to 20 days extra on the force permits by using that supplement in conjunction with, uh, with riders. Any time that you can find a, a point where the rancher and, and Forest Service administrators can agree on something, uh, you got a better working relationship. We have this convergence of goals that we seldom see in in life. You've got the permittees are uh, are uh, pleasing the Forest Service because their cows are off the uh, off the uh, key areas uh, to a large extent. Um, the uh, Forest Service is happy because they're out of the key areas. The initial success of the study provides some optimism that using Crystalix brand supplements to improve the management of domestic livestock grazing on public lands is a promising new technology. First of all, uh, we, the public land grazing, they can eliminate those areas of, of overgrazing, keep them to a minimum. Uh, they can uh, uh, use the cattle to get out and, and, uh, and utilize more of the forage in the outlying areas. Uh, that'll keep the, the forage more healthy. But rather than being in a conflict and fighting over who should have what, this way you can probably start implementing practices so that you can meet all the goals and continue livestock grazing perhaps at, at the same level. I see a real potential to, we've got back some of what we've been cut, but it should definitely take the pressure off of the uh, riparians. And I feel in a few years down the road uh, that they will see that some grazing down there ain't all bad. And if you get to use them, the places that haven't been used, I can see a real plus there for the serious minded. If the permittees can use something like Crystal Licks or really good riding or water developments and salting and all these different things that help distribute the cows like away from the creek bottoms and into areas that they may not normally use, then what you're doing, if you can spread them out, then you can keep the utilization within standards in those heavily used areas longer. So you can keep the cows out there longer and still stay within standards. So using these kind of tools is beneficial because it's still meeting our resource needs and allowing them to stay out there longer. This is a new technique to help do positive uh, management rather than conflict type of resolution of issues on public lands and when there's all kinds of resource concerns. Well it helps a great deal because it gives us summer grazing that we wouldn't otherwise have and so if we didn't have that we'd have to basically have 400 head less cows and that's one more one more family that wouldn't be able to get a living off of the property, either a hired couple or, or, or our own family. Uh, that's what we're hoping for, to utilize the resource the way it should be utilized because if we over-utilize it, then we're out of business. <laughs>